the ability of the brain to actually form is one of the most miraculous things. The fact that just a few stem cells know how to make a neural tube and they know how to turn that neural tube into, you know, a brain with all these complicated regions and cell types, that ability to self-organize, I find it one of the most fascinating processes. My name is Sergio Pashka and I'm a neuroscientist. I was born in Cluj, Romania. I was born during the last few years of communism. Chemistry was the science at that time. So very early on, I built a lab in the basement and I started doing experiments. I started thinking what I would really like to do. And so I thought maybe it would be good to focus on, you know, the chemistry of life. I trained as a physician, but I really thought it would be important to get closer to the brain not coming from a top school. It took me a long time actually to get a fellowship. I stayed in Romania and just teaching after finishing medical school and came to Stanford in 2009. Timothy syndrome is a very rare form of autism. It is genetically defined for which we know the mutation. Our choice of studying Timothy syndrome is that understanding some of these rare forms of neuropsychiatric disorders may ultimately bring some insights into other neuropsychiatric disorders. The pipeline for experiments in my lab really starts with recruiting patients in a very specific psychiatric disorder. And we collect some skin cells, and through a process of reprogramming them, we push them back in time to become stem cell-like cells. One of the amazing abilities of the cells is that, you know, once, um, once you're ready, you can actually push them to become uh, other cell types. My lab has introduced a model for developing a cerebral cortex, the outer layer of the brain, as essentially three-dimensional cultures. We take the stem cells and we aggregate them. We make sort of like a small ball of the cells. And then we start giving them signals and tell them to become a specific part of the brain. This gives you really the ability to non-invasively, um, you know, study human brain tissue from a patient in a dish. That discovery really enabled an entire new field. One of the approaches that we have introduced is to assemble different brain regions, what we now call assembloids. You can make the brain region that generates all the interneurons, and you can make the region that is ultimately the cerebral cortex. The two regions of the brain start talking to each other, and what this allows us is to really gain access to processes in development that we thought would be inaccessible. We would like to use these 3D cultures to study very specific processes during brain development. We've been trying to develop models for a number of, of genetic disorders that are associated with psychiatric disease, be it autism or schizophrenia. Even just for the method that we have introduced, there are already dozens of labs that are using it. My hope is that our research is gonna yield something that can be translated into the clinic. Unlike, for instance, cancer biologists who can actually take the tumor in a dish and actually study it, we do not have that luxury in psychiatry. And the hope of this entire field is really that we're going to be able to do what oncology has done and really try to ask questions about what goes wrong in those cells. This is just the beginning of what one could call molecular psychiatry. 